Welcome to chapel for the Institute of Lutheran Theology. It's good to be able to welcome you. Reverend Timothy J. Swenson here, Dean of Chapel. And we'll be celebrating this service in anticipation of Christ the King Sunday coming up on November 21st. As I said, it's good to have you here. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with our litany. Uh, you could download it from the team's chapel page. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. For the <clears throat> Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, whose will it is to restore all things to your beloved Son, the shepherd of your sheep and the king of all creation. Grant that all people of the earth may be gathered by your word, proclaimed as the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until that last day arrives, order and protect us with your word of law, so that hearing both, law, and gospel, we would be held in the safety of your flock. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We receive our scripture today from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning in the 24th verse. 24th verse. Jesus said, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give up its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. 
And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings to you. Greetings on this day that the Lord has made. A day for us to rejoice and be glad. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Stay awake. Be alert. These are the commands given to sentinels, sentries, and watchmen. Those to whom is given the duty of warning of an impending attack. Those to whom is given the duty of protecting the life of the life of or visiting death upon the community or company assigning them sentry duty. The sentry's duty is of such vital importance as to visit the death sentence upon the sentry who falls asleep. On August 31st, 1861, Private William Scott was found asleep at his post guarding the chain bridge approach to our nation's capital. Four days earlier, the Union Army had suffered a humiliating defeat at Manassas Junction. The Confederate Army remained encamped less than 10 miles from Washington, D.C. Private Scott's malfeasance while on sentry duty earned him a death sentence to be carried out nine days hence. His comrades in arms rallied around him. He had volunteered for sentry duty that night, as he had for several nights, on behalf of a fellow soldier sick in bed. The unit's chaplain carried his mate's plea for mercy to the commanding officer. Since they were so close to the Capitol, word reached the White House. And President Lincoln came to assess the situation. After a long conversation with Private Scott and his command, with his commander, Lincoln issued a presidential pardon for the convicted soldier. Private William Scott went on to exemplary service in the following months. No duty proved too onerous or assignment too hazardous, but what Scott would volunteer. On April 16, 1862, less than eight months after his pardon, Private Scott was fatally wounded as he saved his wounded comrades from drowning as the unit attacked across a river. He was carrying a comrade on his shoulders as six bullets struck him. He died the next day. Before dying, he bid his comrades his thanks for their comradeship and asked them, if possible, to convey his gratitude to Lincoln for the pardon that enabled him to die as a soldier and not executed as a criminal. Between the day of his pardon and the day of his death, Private Scott lived as a soldier. He lived between pardon and consequence. Stay awake, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Stay awake. Do not be found out as a failed sentinel, a sleeping sentry, 
or a watchman nodding off, stay awake. And yet, we can't. The constant wakefulness demanded by Jesus' command here is beyond us. Beyond us, humans broken by sin. Beyond us, as people of a fallen world. Beyond us, who try as we might, simply do not have the constitution for constant, continual alertness. Witness. Witness the disciples in Gethsemane. No matter how many times Jesus bid them to stay awake, watchful in his hour of trial, they slept. They did not hear the mob approaching as it came to capture Jesus. They failed. They slept. They proved it for all of us. We will all fall asleep on sentry duty. The death sentence awaits us all. Who, who will be our Lincoln to pardon us from such death? Jesus Christ, you say? Of course. Of course it is he. Jesus Christ remains faithful to us, even as we fail in our own faithfulness demonstrating over and over our unfaithfulness to our Lord and God, engaging again and again in some form of adultery with other gods, with the things of this world, or even the indulgence of the sinful self. Jesus forgives our sins, even the sin of falling asleep on the bridge with the enemy encamped just down the road. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. In Jesus' name, I forgive you all your sins. Yet. Yet there are consequences. In this old, passing away world, subject to time's march and sin's debasement, our acts carry consequences. Our sin and our sins are truly forgiven. But their penalties, their effects, mar our days, exact their own penalties and burden us with their weight. For now, while we live temporally, that is, within time, God has given us a word or two about both minimizing consequences and receiving consequences. You know that, as the Ten Commandments, that set is the obvious. Good God works also through human governments to order our lives, and he works through the cultural and societal norms that establish certain boundaries to our days. These are collectively known as the law. They order our life during this time in the old creation. The gospel, as distinct from the law, places us in the new creation where the law is silent. I learned it from Luther like this. While we are still in the flesh, there is the acting spontaneously out of love as the new creature in Christ takes hold of us. For those who aren't taken hold of, who can't or don't act spontaneously out of love, there is the law. It is a poor substitute for love. But some consider obeying it for the reward it brings. 
Others consider obeying it to avoid the punishment of disobedience. For those who will not act spontaneously out of love, or who will not act out of consideration for reward or for punishment, for those there is always the hangman. But in any case, the neighbor will be served, either spontaneously out of love or in consideration of obedience to the law. Stay awake. Watch. Be alert. You know the consequences. All of us, all of us will go down to the grave suffering the consequences of failure as a sentinel, a watchman, a sentry. But we go to the grave forgiven. In the meantime, between this day when you have received a royal pardon, between this day and your return to the dust, between this day of your pardon and that day of your death, your Lord has given you a neighbor, most likely more than one, neighbors to love spontaneously as you are the new creature in Christ, neighbors to serve out of your obedience to the law. Serving your neighbor, not yourself, is now your vocation. You have parents whom you are commanded to honor. You have that awful and aggravating neighbor whom you are commanded not to kill. You have that wife or husband whose marriage bed you are to keep undefiled. You have sinners for friends, and you are commanded to uphold their reputation. Employers, police, magistrates, and justices, all of whom, you are commanded to obey. These things, all these things are given to you while you wait. You must stay alert, awake, and watch, so that none of what you are given is set aside or mislaid. The immediate condemnation of your sin is set aside in the forgiveness Jesus has won for you on the cross. You are pardoned. Now, between this day and the day you go down to the dust, you have some time to fulfill your vocation, to be a servant of your neighbors, to be a child of God, a member of the royal household, living between pardon and the dust of the grave, you both watch and wait until, as Isaiah put it, until you hear the voice of your watchman, they lift up their voice together, they sing for joy, for eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I may wait and watch for the day of the Lord while carrying out those tasks you have given me in home, in community, in workplace, and in congregation. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Heavenly Father, hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I would not grow weary of those tasks you've given me and abandon them for a religious quest of my own devising. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I would hear the precious gospel of your Son, 
to know that my sins are forgiven, to be content with the righteousness of your Son, and not to covet a righteousness of my own. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I would be a useful neighbor, fulfilling the duties of all my vocations. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I receive the failures of my neighbors, not with anger, but with the same forgiveness with which Christ has received my failures. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Hold the Institute of Lutheran Theology, its students, faculty, and staff in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that it may raise up preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ to send into future generations. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, hold me in the faith of Jesus Christ by the working of your Holy Spirit, that I would not have ears to hear the entreaties of false messiahs, but have ears, have ears, only for the true word, who is Jesus Christ, handed over to me by my preacher. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen.